So we're faced with this indefinite integral, and in this video we're going to use trigonometric substitution. The first thing you want to do is think of this as the square root of 1 minus, and then x, you want to think of that as the square root of x squared. And this is all being divided by the square root of x. And then recall that whenever you have an integral of the form a squared minus u squared, you can simply let u equal a sine theta. Now in this case a is 1 because we can think of 1 as 1 squared. So our u is going to be the square root of x. Our a is 1 so I won't write it but there's a 1 there. And then we just have the sine of theta. Now we have to differentiate both sides but we have this square root so it's better to square both sides. So if you square the square root of x you just get x. And if you square the sine function you get sine squared theta. Now we'll take the derivative of both sides, so we end up with dx is equal to, and here we have to use the chain rule, so I'll bring the 2 down, so you get 2 sine theta times the derivative of the inside, which is cosine theta, and then we have the d theta. Alright, let's backtrack for a moment and see what we already have and what we need. Well, it looks like we already have dx, so that part's taken care of. We also have the square root of x. The only thing we need is this numerator, the square root of 1 minus x. Now most people, um, they memorize what the substitution is. I like to work it out every time, it's more fun. So this is the square root of 1 minus the square root of x squared. And so this is equal to the square root of 1 minus, well we said the square root of x was sine theta. So this is sine squared theta. 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared theta and here we just get cosine theta. It looks like we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and make our substitution. So we have the integral of, well, okay, the numerator is cosine theta. So you gotta be really careful in this step. So cosine theta. The denominator is the square root of x, which we said was sine theta. So this is sine theta. Okay, and then the dx, dx is 2 sine theta cosine theta. So this is 2 sine theta cosine theta, and we still have the d theta. This is a really, really careful step. You've got to be really careful. Okay, the signs cancel, and so we end up with 2 cosine squared theta d theta. Now we'll use a popular identity. This is equal to the integral of 2, and then we have 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. That's the same thing as cosine squared. This is one of the most useful identities in these trig substitution problems. You definitely want to know the identity for cosine squared and for sine squared. The one for sine squared has a minus sign here. That's the only difference. The 2's cancel. So we end up with, let's break up the integral, so we have d theta plus, and then we have the integral of cosine 2 theta, d theta. There's a 1 here, so when we integrate this, we simply get theta. And what's a function whose derivative is cosine? Well, that's sine. And then we have a 2 here, so we just divide by 2, so sine of 2 theta divided by 2, and then we have our plus c. So at some point we have to draw a triangle to finish this problem. Now our triangle is going to involve theta because our original substitution has a theta in it. So we have to get rid of this 2 theta. So what we'll do is we'll use an identity. So this is theta plus sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta, and this is all being divided by 2, and then we still have the plus c. So we end up with theta plus sine theta cosine theta plus c. Now let's go to the side and draw our triangle. So we know that the sine of theta is equal to the square root of x. That was our original substitution. We want to think of this as the square root of x over 1. And using so ka toa sine is the so so it's opposite 
over hypotenuse. And now we can draw our triangle. So here's theta. And let's see, opposite is going to be the square root of x. Hypotenuse is going to be 1. And this part, a lot of people memorize it. I like to work it out every time. Sometimes it changes in some of the harder problems. So what you can do is you can call this side b and use the theorem of Pythagoras. It says that 1 squared is equal to the square root of x squared plus b squared. If we subtract this guy, we get b squared equals 1 minus x, right? Because this is simply x. Taking the square root, we end up with the square root of 1 minus x. And it's positive because it's the length of the side of a triangle. Now we're ready to write our final answer down, finally. So we know that the sine of theta is equal to the square root of x. So sine takes theta and gives you the square root of x. So the arc sine, so the arc sine takes the square root of x and gives you back theta. So theta is simply the arc sine of the square root of x. Sine of theta, we know what that is. It's the square root of x, so square root x. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is the adjacent. In this case, the hypotenuse is simply 1. So this is the square root of 1 minus x over 1. But I won't bother writing it. And then we still have the plus c. So I kind of rushed through that video because these problems are so long. <laughs> uh, so hopefully that made sense.